G'day Highlanders fans and welcome into Landers Lockdown Lounge. Uh, I understand you're all battling away in lockdown, so we thought, oh, we'll try something a little bit different that you may or no, it may not like and it may or may not be of any interest to you. To try and lift the spirits a little uh, and hear from some of the past Highlanders uh, from all over the world and how they're dealing with this lockdown situation. Uh, I'm going to head uh, into their lounge rooms or into their bedrooms uh, via Zoom and hear a few yarns uh, from back in their day and how they're dealing with this lockdown. We're starting things off, wow, with two of the greatest white battlers of all time uh, to lace up the boots for the Landers, and that is Tony Downtown, Claw Brown, and the one, the only, Martin Screech Banks. Welcome on in, fellas. How are we getting on? Very good, Joey. Good to be here. Yeah. I'm not surprised you've called me in your time in need again, Joey. Um, it's normally you go to, so it's, uh, it's good to be back, mate. Nice to see you, Brownie. Yeah, we'll, we'll start with you, Brownie. We don't want, we don't want Banksy running his mouth too much. Um, you've been in lockdown for, geez, how long? Um, now, Brownie, it must be a few, a few yeah, weeks, uh, is it? I think it's close to 20 days, I suppose. Three weeks here. She's and been, uh, you know, I'm pretty used to it now, so been pretty good and where are you based and who are you who are you with uh just with the family up on mary hill here so uh as you can see good backdrop there and uh lovely sunny day you take us on a quick tour of that garden uh brownie i know you've got some um an impressive outdoor fire that is sort of your go-to oh just a, a wee outdoor fire area over there there's the budget uh, tennis court out the back here for we knock around with the kids. Not bad, Brownie. And what about you, Banksy? Where are you at the moment, mate? You've just come back from Japan, like myself. Yeah, um, I'm up in Auckland with the missus, so uh, I've actually got a collapsed volcano at the back. Um, I was going to show you it, but it's quite bright out there. Obviously, um, we don't have a big backyard like Brownie does. We had to adopt it from the council. Um, I guess that's the difference between a coach's wage and a player's wage. But uh, <laughs> yeah, nice little spot up here in Auckland, mate. Well, Banksy, just think another ten years in um, in Japan, mate, and you'll be you'll be sitting pretty like Brownie. Yeah, well, that's right, Marty. If you um, <laughs> if you're a bit more of a dominator, you'd probably have the uh, <laughs> girlfriend down south here, mate, and you could probably spend a bit more of your money and get her something a bit better. But obviously, <laughs> you've uh, always been dominated by the females, so that's why you're up. <laughs> Not bad, Brownie. Not bad. <laughs> Um, who is the girlfriend, Bexie? Can you give us a bit of a rundown? Like, obviously, pretty serious if you're locking things down for um, an extended period. We, we, you want a bit of a debrief on on the missus? Uh, of course. Um, well, she actually has to work, so she's an essential service. She's off to one use today, so oh. I've actually got the house myself pretty much 90% of the time, mate. So I pretty much live alone, um, <laughs> trying to hit golf balls off the back deck into the uh, into the volcano and. Um, I was actually doing a bit of mopping, mopping yesterday to keep her happy. You know, I learned a bit from you on my time there, Joey, when I live with you. So, um, caught Ted, you wrapped around her finger. So, um, yeah, there's some mopping and some vacuuming to keep her happy while she's at work. I was about to say, I never saw you pick up a mop or any sort of cleaning device when you lived at our house. So, anyway, let's get on to you, Banksy. I've no, got a question about your, um, your Japan experience. Um, obviously, you've been over there a couple of years. How, how have you found it so far, mate? Yeah, I, I, we went over there and it was, um, I was in second div, um, which was, uh, second div was actually all good. Um, our team's probably a team that needed a bit of time to develop and um, I guess after that year we probably thought we had developed a little bit until we experienced top league and um, played some of the bigger teams. Um, <laughs> had a bit of a, 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 a debut by five for our first six games. I think we copped, uh, I can't remember what our points difference was. It was a hell of a lot, though. Not much. So um, the experience was um, definitely, a bit, definitely a bit different. But um, as a whole, mate, it was pretty cool to um, see the competition grow before the World Cup to after the World Cup. Obviously, Brownie probably played a big part in that with, with Japan. But just seeing the country really getting behind footy and um, support it the way they did uh, was pretty impressive to see. So you can't fault the, the culture and you can't fault the way they get in behind um, sports teams. Yeah, awesome, mate. Uh, Brownie, back, back to sort of the local stuff in terms of the Highlanders and 
uh, and New Zealand rugby. We, like, once we come out of this lockdown, so what do you see the landscape, the rugby landscape looking like? And, and when do you sort of think it'll, it'll be kicking into gear, mate? Yeah, obviously um, they want to get some footy up and running straight away. So they're going to get a, a pretty exciting competition, I believe, and um, just getting the five New Zealand franchises out at each other. So I reckon that'll be some really exciting footy to watch and hopefully, um, you know, something a bit unique from what's been happening in the past around Super Rugby. So, you know, the, the Blues, Chiefs, Hurricanes, Crusaders and Highlanders are going to go toe-to-toe to see who's the uh, best team in New Zealand. Yeah, awesome, mate. I reckon that'd be great. Uh, Banksy, in terms of the Japanese season, how's that looking? And, and when are you expected back over there? Uh, I understand the season's been canned for this year. Yeah, yeah, mate. It's um, uh, It's been a pretty, last sort of six, eight weeks has been a bit um, of a roller coaster. We didn't really know what was going on and probably still don't know exactly what's going on, to be fair. We know the competition's been cancelled, but... Um, what that looks like for the team, um, I'm not too sure. I know our team's actually gone into um, self-isolation for the next month. Not It's not a country-wide thing. I think it's just they're not training or anything. So for the next month, they're going to stay away from training and um, reveal it at the end of, end of this month to see what that landscape looks like and then we get back into training. But, yeah, she's uncertain times with footy over there. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Each day you wake up to a different email about what's going on, but I think they're starting to find some... Um, consistency with what's going on there. Brownie, in terms of your involvement, because obviously your other hat is uh, the Japanese assistant coach, tech coach with um, with Jamie Joe. What's the international landscape looking like? Like you guys have meant to be playing England and a couple of others, I think, in July. Is that right? Yeah, we were meant to play Wales on their way here and um, England as well for a couple of tests. But obviously um, they're on sort of hold at the moment. Um, and we won't know really what's happening with international rugby until you know we probably get this super rugby competition, um, the New Zealand one up and running, and get that get that run, um, and then potentially looking towards I suppose later in the year to try and play some international rugby. Yeah, awesome, mate. Hey, um, Brownie, I don't know if you've been catching it on Sky Sport, but the um the throwback games. I've uh, been seeing a little bit of your footage from back in the day, Baxi. I don't know if you've seen it either, but Brownie's uh, right foot spiral. How good was that? <laughs> no drop punts in those days. Eh? It, was, <laughs> it was pretty ropey, my, my uh, spiral. But um, So I was quite thankful when the drop punt actually came in. Gave me a little bit more consistency. <laughs> that claw, um, would it, that claw, you used to do the old school sort of drop onto the foot too, didn't you, with the, with the claw? <laughs> It was, it was, yeah. Nah, hand over the top. Um, so, nah, she's a bit of a laugh. I'll tell you what wasn't a laugh was that 99 final, mate. Can you sort of give us a bit of a rundown on, on sort of on that, that experience? Because, I mean, Carisbrook just looked like it was rocking. It obviously got named the party at Tony Brown's. Um, can you just give us a bit of an insight into what that, that week leading up and the week probably post uh, was like? <laughs> um, yeah, well, we obviously had to go to South Africa for our semi and uh, had a pretty awesome win over there against the Stormers. Um, and, you know, true Highlander style back in those days, we probably had one too many. <laughs> um, so coming out of our, out of South Africa, we are probably a bit ropey. Um, and then got back to Dunedin and it was all go with this party at Tony Brown's, which was some, uh, I, I guess, a bit of a marketing um, ploy for uh, the Highlanders back in those days. So, you know, I wasn't, wasn't aware of anything. So when I got, when I landed in Dunedin, it was all go and um, sort of took up a lot of my time. But um, then we got to the game and uh, yeah, I just felt as though probably we were probably the better team, but just didn't quite um, nail that game um, on that day. And, you know, the Crusaders have, made a living out of um, winning finals and, uh, you know, they, they took the spoils. And, but I, I, think, um, I think we had the better team, just didn't quite get the job done. Um, now, everyone wants to know, did the party at Tony Brown's actually eventuate after losing? Oh, there was a good, good uh, few days of partying. <laughs> um, it was always the way back in those days at the end of the year. 
you know, you sort of had enjoyed your few days with your teammates, um, you know, the sort of families just waited a couple of days and <laughs> all the dust to settle and then, you know, everyone went home, home to their families and uh, enjoyed the next part of the year until Super Rugby started again. Yeah, nice, mate. Um, I'll tell you what, Beef, just quickly on that. We yeah. need Brownie to make another final and win it because how good of a party be in the backyard of that? that <laughs> you, can, you can have the whole that you needed in that backyard, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Alex might have something to say about that. <laughs> no, we'll send her away for a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, now I've seen all these um, ex, ex players doing trick shots and. Um, these TikToks and stuff like that, Brownie. You, have you got into that with your kids? Yeah, no, I can't say I have. Um, oh. No, I haven't done a haven't done a TikTok. Um, no, what about no the trick TikTok. shots, mate? I'm trying to get them get their fitness up, just biking and running, just, <laughs> and just get the yards into them rather than the skill. Yeah, nice, mate. Skill come later, you reckon? Yeah, I think you just got to build the base. So yeah. just resilience at this age. It is pretty impressive, though. You look at, like, say, Carlos Spitzer, Christian Cullen. These guys are doing back flicks from, like, 30 metres and draining it into uh, basketball hoops. Pretty freakish sort of stuff, really. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're skillful, skillful guys. We're just the white battlers, mate. We just... <laughs> battlers, Joey. We're, Too much we're razzle. Down, <laughs> win the fitness. Win the fitness and... Uh, Make your tackles. <laughs> and drop punt with the claw on top, always. <laughs> yeah, just adapt and persevere, mate. Yeah, nice, mate. And what about you, Bex? Are you What have you been up to in isolation? Like, you're, you're a keen golfer, so you, you've been working on your short game? Mate, I've been trying to putt. It's always been a downfall of mine. Um, I'm still four putting from four foot, so... Um, but, yeah, it's, it's just housework, mate. Eh? I've, I've been for a few runs and... Did some hill sprints and that worked out why I hated hill sprints and haven't gone back to them. Uh, but currently, I'm um, currently setting up a. It's, it's probably pretty risky because there's a few rocks around in this um, in this crater, but a few houses around. But I want to set up a little pitching green. Um, yeah, nice. Yeah, bit of risk involved, but um, Michelle's on good money at one year, so she can fix the windows, mate. <laughs> yeah, beauty. And in terms of Brownie, you've obviously been in for three weeks. What have you been watching, um, TV wise, Netflix? You probably would have. Um, burnt it all out by now but any recommendations yeah well, obviously um love my sport and uh haven't got a lot of sport on at the moment so i've been getting into you know this netflix um sporting movies and uh series so drive to survive was a winner yeah brilliant, um, brilliant, brilliant. i watched uh i watched the um banks you're like this one the um run uh ride like a girl the Melbourne Cup, um, was it Michelle Payne won the Michelle Payne, yeah, yeah, first first female to win the Melbourne Cup. That was a that was a good uh, movie for the family. Um, Hands of Stone, um, there's a good boxing movie with uh, Robert De Niro, and so nah, just all the sporting stuff I'm getting into, and uh, it's been pretty entertaining. Yeah, nice mate, Banksy. Any recommendations, mate? Yeah, apart actually, from, the, apart from obviously the the R eighteen ones, no, 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 none of that, mate. Don't need that these days. But um, <laughs> just no, that movie Brownie was talking about the the horse racing one. I, I didn't think I'd be that into it, but when I watched it, it was actually quite a cool watch. With what she had to go through from when she sort of grew up to actually fight out of race like the Melbourne Cup. So if you got to spare a couple of hours. I'd definitely um, go along that line, and even if you're not an avid horse. Horse racing fan like myself, you would have you would have choked up Marty, wouldn't you? If it was quite a tearjerker, wasn't it? Yeah, no, I didn't quite get to tears there, Brownie, but um, yeah, it wouldn't have been far off, mate. I tell you what, Banksy, I'll be in tears if our nag uh, eventually gets onto the uh, Melbourne Cup, mate. I'll be in bloody tears because that thing doesn't even run on the track at the moment. Oh, mate, she's been a money sucker for three years. That thing, and um, no, they just need to make a decision with that, really, but. <laughs> By all accounts, I've heard it's the next big thing, so we'll see what happens there. But, um, yeah, outside of Brownie's movie, um, I've actually been trying to win the Major League Baseball on PlayStation. Um, I started off as a beginner, progressed to intermediate, and then tried going to the big dog professional league and um, got my, my backside handed to me. So I stopped playing that game, mate, because I dropped my lip pretty quick. So um, the PlayStation was put on the back burner. 
Yeah, fair enough too. All right, last bit, boys, is um, we're going to do this with all our guests that come on the uh, Landers Lockdown Lounge, and that is naming your Highlanders 15 of all time. So, Banksy, I'm going to start with you, if you could just um, name it, starting with the props, obviously working through to your 15. Um, I know you'd like to name yourself, but you're not allowed to name yourself, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in there, Beav, I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> I mate, obviously, I know quite a bit about front row and all the rest of it, but uh, just with my team, I've gone mainly old school, but throwing in some new school in there too. So, um, early doors, I've got Carl Hoft and Carl Heyman locking it down up front. Um, Hooker, Anton Oliver, pretty self-explanatory there. Um, this one might throw a few spanners in the works here. Uh, I've gone T. Franks, Tom Franklin. Obviously, I don't want to blow his head up too much. And uh, Brad Thorne, <laughs> um, obviously the son learning from the father there. Um, the flankers, Tane Randall and Cronfield. Oh, yeah, nice. And then uh, number eight, eight it's obviously, it's obviously uh, I've gone with Nussie. Nussie. But it was a toss-up toss between him and Nussie Tolo. Tolo. Obviously, Nasty, uh, played long side Nasty. Obviously, he did things that, you know, probably played the final when he probably should have, but couldn't see it as well. And this one, I'm just glad, like, I'm not around any of the home beer. I'm just glad I didn't have a quick sauce. Because if I chose sauce, I'm going to be in the end of it. Brownie beat him anyway, but I'm just glad I didn't give it to Brownie. Yeah, and then the middle, I've got on with probably a bit of a brute string. Gone with a couple, couple of horses, horses there, there. Um, Mapu Sua and Muller Docks. Um, obviously, probably not going to see much ball in the wings there, but uh, yeah, and I've gone with Buck Chuck on the bench just because uh, get some white battler in there. Um, the wings, I've gone Goldie and Weiss. And then uh, fullback, I've actually put myself in there, but uh, you've told me I can't, so um, I've gone with B Smith, obviously, for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> Lucky to, he's lucky to make the cut. But, uh, who's yeah, who's captaining the side? Um, well, I haven't actually put a captain in there, Beef, but I'll, I'll, I'll throw one off the cuff. Um, it's definitely not going to be wise sucky, that's for sure. <laughs> no, nah, got to give it to Nussie. He always yeah, led us pretty well, so right. Nussie gets it. Yeah, brilliant team, mate. Very formidable. Uh, Brownie, yours, please. Well, I've actually moved, moved uh, Bad News News to loose head for this game. Um, <laughs> Just his ball carrying ability, so he's going to be the loose head. Um, and then we've got big Garth Oliver at hooker, Ooh. big Zaga Heyman at uh, tight head, and then every team needs a polar bear. So I'm with uh, Banksy, my polar bear is Brad Thorne. Um, he makes the cut there. But of my line out exponent, the master of the line out is Donkey Mailing. So he, make, he takes that other locking spot. And then we've got Tane Randall, Josh Cromfeld. And the Nacho Man Manu at number eight. Nuggy Smith. And uh, I've picked uh, Lima Sopawanga at 10. Um, I've moved Golden Balls Wilson to the left wing because to open up a spot for uh, Waisaki Naholo. I think um, Goldie could do anything on the rugby field so he can play left wing. Um, <laughs> he won't be happy with that, mate. He would not be happy with that. <laughs> I put my no, captain be fair, got more tries, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, why is he the. Weiss takes the number one spot, top yeah. try scorer. My captain's at number 12 with John Longshanks Leslie. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and I've teamed him up with uh, Fast Feet, Peter Alatini. Oh, lovely. And then chiming in from the back is obviously Bender Smith. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ben Smith. Oh, he's very, very, very lucky to make these sides in my eyes. Oh, these teams, well, they're going to create some hot debate uh, in the garden in the spa pool, uh, mucking around the, uh, the uh, backyard or just over the dinner table. Uh, make sure you let us know your thoughts. Uh, well, anyway, Banksy and Brownie, thanks for your time. Um, as always, lads, it's a pleasure to catch up. Uh, next week, uh, I'm going to be shooting over to France to catch up with uh, Ben Smith and Lukey Whitelock. Uh, the luckiest man in uh, New Zealand to make those Hollanders teams. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the uh, comments section below that you want me to ask uh, Bender and Lukey next week. Uh, but lastly, uh, from all the Hollanders and all the staff, we hope everyone out there is uh, hanging tight during this uh, really testing time, uh, staying safe, staying home, looking after their family and friends, and most of all, uh, keeping a smile on our dial. Keep it on, team, and we'll see you next week. Love your work. Just Good stuff, Joey.